Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is my first and probably final uh, 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 time hosting the Dr. Hal show, and it gives me no end of pleasure to introduce to you tonight the man you've all come to see, Dr. Hal. Oh, In my craft or sullen art, exercised in the still night, while only the moon rages and the lovers lie abed, holding their griefs in their arms, I labor by singing light. Not for ambition or bread or for the strut and trade of charms on the ivory stages, but for the common wages of their most secret heart. Not for the proud man, apart from the raging moon, I write on these spindrift pages. But for the lovers, their arms round the griefs of the ages, who pay no praise nor wages, nor heed my craft or art. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are again. And I... I'm so grateful to have landed here in the dark room. And now perhaps, uh, like um, Goldilocks uh, in the famous story, we have found a venue that is just right. And yet there are other things rushing upon us, like Burning Man, for example. That's going to be such a headache that uh, after next uh, week, we're what? probably not going to have another show, unless there's an enormous, unexpected demand for it. What is it? Dr. Hal? Yes? Why is God a necessarily subjective uh, concept? <laughs> necessary to some, because many people can't stand to think of anything superior to them. The idea that there would be an eternal, uh, non-created, but self-evident evident being going back to the beginning of time, especially some old duffer with a long white beard and hair, walking around uh, in a senile fog in the Garden of Eden, the Ancient of Days, as he was called. This is all just extremely unpalatable. But no less an authority than R. Crumb recently said he suspected that there was a god somewhere. No. Uh, and yet he dislikes the entire uh, first book of Genesis, which he's been illustrating in comic book form and will be released this September. A series of preview pages was uh, printed in the New Yorker, and boy, are they great. You can see a lot of great stuff in there, uh, including the explicit adventures of Adam and Eve. Well, uh, but the question is about the old boy himself. In the Church of the Subgenius, we believe that this god, as he is called, is actually senile. Jehovah One, uh, malign uh, space god, is an alien and still threatens this planet, but has gotten old and distracted and has old timers or Alzheimer's disease. And this is a good explanation of the way some things are in this world and this universe today. But whoever braided the braided rings of Saturn can't be such an old fart as all that. Then, of course, it might be that he set everything in motion, like an elaborate elect train, electric train set, and then set, settled back to watch it uh, crash. <laughs> so, uh, why is God a necessarily subjective concept? Because to each, God is different. And perhaps it's just a glitch in our wiring, included in the permanent indelible oh, no. record of this show. On YouTube, oh, yeah. I hope you're all keeping up with this show on YouTube on Puzzling Evidence TV, an enormous uh, archive of show moments, all carefully and exquisitely calculated to embarrass me, are up on YouTube. Every mistake I've ever made in reciting a poem and, and so on is there for all time for the connoisseur and the cognoscenti to see. We are accustomed to believe at the oddest, most uh, damned inconvenient times that whoops, there's somebody there watching and we better mind our P's and Q's, suck in that gut, put our shoulders back and uh, practice basic hygiene. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hunt. Well, let's have, have another one. And, uh, and 
faster uh, and funnier. Uh, well, uh, he has a question about uh, ourselves, about humans. Um, yes, there's life on man, because each of us is like a planet and has many inhabitants. I know this may sound odd, but there are special creatures that live in your eyelashes which never associate with the special creatures that live in your eyebrows. I am not exaggerating in any way. And there are certain creatures that would be very disappointed indeed if they didn't have your feet to snack on or your earwax also as an aperitif. Uh, when these critters get out of control, then we have uh, a problem and need to do something about it. The question for you is, if I may ask one of you, which is more important, establishing your dominance in the family unit or respecting the wishes of those who are nominally under your control, command, and domination? Yeah? They won't be that way if you don't give them dominance. a little rope. If you don't give them a little slack, they will uh, burn down your house. Around. And we, and we so all need more slack. Please be uh, advised of that. Um, but when they are in a dynamic and harmonious balance, we can only wish them bon appetit and hope that they will continue to maintain the excessively complex super system, which is a human being. Thank you. No, no, thank you. They look like that, too. So fucking boring. I thought I, I took care of that. <laughs> Let's go up to the, the pants first. Um, Kara. The epitome of fashion wears not only flannel pants to work, but pajamas in the broad light of day when the sun is directly overhead and noon lies heavy on flower and tree and the weary day turns to its rest lingering like an unloved guest. And if k Rob can do it, by God you can do it. Don't be such a wimp, if I may say so. You know, wear what you want. Remember, we have passed uh, the hippies historically, but they still have given us something, which is clothes express uh, consciousness. And if you're a flannel pants in the broad daylight kind of guy, by all means, wear them and do not masquerade with false pretenses and false trousers. And why is Saturn so fucking boring? Well, it's far away, it's huger than our Earth, it's older than our Earth, it will be lo here long after uh, you are dust. To you, Saturn is boring. To Saturn, you are completely inconsequential. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hal. I, I'm going to uh, award the uh, questioner of that. That's uh, right. The that, 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 is a, that is a Fernet worthy question. Yeah, yeah. You should because come up and drink it in front of God and the assembly and company. Because Pete Goldie will, will be meeting you out front after the show, and he will show you what he has to say about Pat. Did he so, bring you his telescope? Uh, no. I bet you Pete asked that question. No, I, I, I brought something to settle the boring question. Um, um, uh, consequences <laughs> for our actual so. lady. Actual lady. Yay, lady. Yay, lady. And, and the next question is rather a philosophical question. No, I think we can stand the push of your one okay. philosophical question. Okay. This is from. Uh, Whatever. Whatever. The question, Dr. Hal. Yes. And I think we have all asked this question at one time or another. Then I should have no difficulty answering. Why me? Apparently it's just a, a little bit too much for you, eh? Is that the thing? Why you? Because you want somebody else to take this burden from you. And wasn't that the anguished question asked by Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane? Why did he have to swill down this bitter cup? Why did he have to be the dead guy on the stick? Why couldn't it be somebody else? Well, we all have a part to play. And usually it doesn't involve uh, nails being driven into our hands and feet, uh, at least for most of us. But um, it might be possible to wiggle out of it. And one should always try. Uh, at the long-ago Night of Slack, that historic subgenius uh, gathering where J.R. Bob Dobbs was assassinated by a crazed lone nut, many of our ancient and prized subgenius uh, artifacts were on display, including 
The Shroud of Bozo. <laughs> yes, yeah. we had that up, and Not we also funny. had the, the triune crucifixion of Bozo. If yeah, uh, that anyone remembers nice. that image, it shows the three crosses, and nailed to it are the hands and feet of, uh, of Bozo the Clown. But they were sawed off by that self-same clown because only an idiot would allow himself to get into that position in the first place. <laughs> he sawed these off and then left the scene of torture, Golgotha, and so forth. So if you attempt to evade your destiny, who knows? You might be able to. Then that becomes your destiny. Do not sit and accept everything which comes toddling down the pike for you. But if you are well and truly caught and can't wiggle out of the way, then it's time for another philosophy, a manly philosophy, the philosophy of Stoicism, where you take it and like it. Thank you.